Hey, hey, this is director, producer Alan Wills, and I am on Positive Power 21 with Jerry Royce Live. And when I'm online, I listen to Jerry Royce Live at www.freaker.com backslash positivepower21.org. Y'all heard? Listening to Positive Power 21.org with Jerry Royce. What up? It's your boy Kano Kingston. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. Hey, this is Kat. Hi, I'm Teresa Powell. Hi, Jerry. This is Iowa Sandro Carter. Hi, this is Paul Powers. Hello, this is Teresa Bobby with Jerry Royce Live. Hi, I'm Philip Byrne. I'm live on the Jerry Royce Show. Hey, what do you do? Boy, who's the same? Hey, this is Dolly, the poet, spoken word artist. Hello, this is Ramon Marquis with Jerry Royce Live. All right, all right, everyone. we got Robin Lynn, and I'm keeping it live right now on Jerry Royce Live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up? This is a award winning podcast with the greatest podcast on earth. Thank you for stopping by. I'm your host, Jerry Royce Live Worldwide on Internet Radio, where you get your positive on. So when it's all positive, it's all power. That's positive power. This is a worldwide podcast for growth, wealth, and success. Thank you. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Hey, thank you everybody for joining us and welcome to Positive Power 21.org. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power 21, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? I am Jerry Royce Live. I am blessed. I am worldwide. Philippians 4, 6 says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. You're listening to episode 393. And tonight is a special episode called Ladies of Internet Radio. And tonight I have two of my, some of my favorite people. From, that's right, from South Carolina. They're from Kingdoms Builders Publications. And, um, and also we have an individual author here. That's right, under the Kingdom Builders Publications um, Company. And the first up is going to be Sabrina Brown. She's a poet, and she's also a podcaster. She does inspiration with Sabrina on the Positive Power 21.org network. And, Sabrina, how you doing tonight? Hi, Jerry. I'm doing all right. Thanks for having uh, us. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us. And also, we got the famous one, Louise Smith, the publisher and CEO of Kingdom Builders Publications. How you doing tonight, Louise? Oh, man, it's a great evening to rejoice. I'm so glad to hang out with you tonight, you and Sabrina. Yeah, that's right. You are here. I know it's raining outside, everybody. We got storms brewing up and down the East Coast, but hey. We have an internet tonight. I know some people may not have internet tonight, but the good thing is the show is on demand, and you can find it on iTunes and Spreaker Radio. Just look for Jerry Royce Live 
Worldwide All Positive Power 21. And I'm just so happy to have both of you on here. I just look, I look forward to uh, Sabrina's inspirations when she publishes them under Sprint. And we're going to work with Sabrina, too. Cause she, <laughs> she, she threw me a bone, Louise. I'm going to get her. She did. <laughs> Yeah, but Sprina had me on the phone for about two hours fooling around her trying to get her 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 iPod up on the iTunes and she couldn't figure it out. But I understand why. It, it wasn't that easy, Sabrina. It wasn't. No, no, no. It's Y'all got it worked out now though, yeah? Oh yeah, yeah. We up there now. I mean I told Sabrina well, Sabrina not on there yet because what we want to do is we want Sabrina to be able to publish her her inspirations, you know, anytime she feel like it without having to call me or inbox me, and it will just, mm-hmm. you know, stream itself right to the network. And that's what we're yeah. trying to do. Yeah. Okay. It's, 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 so everything's so technical. But they had a video out on it and made it it's easy doable. for us. So, yeah, yeah. you got to do it like that. There's so many people. You know, look how we grown. Beautiful people. Beautiful people. <laughs> so we're going to start out the show with Sabrina. And Sabrina, tell everybody a little bit about you. Who is Sabrina Brown? Well, I am a native of South Carolina, and I still currently live in Columbia, South Carolina. I am a an adjunct professor. I've taught for over 10 years now at different community and four-year colleges in the state of South Carolina, and I also have prior experience in internal audit where I was a state internal auditor for about six years with the state. And uh, now I currently own my own business called Administering Business Lessons While Changing Lives. And what I try to do with that business is just to help people to grow and develop themselves personally, teach about business lessons and help businesses to grow. And also I uh, do a lot of writing for people, including poetry, personalized poetry, uh, resume writing and different business documents and things of that nature. And I also do a little bit of tutoring on the side as well. So that is uh, the primary thing that I do now. And I'm also a poet. I enjoy writing poetry. And I have published my first book last year under Miss Louise's company, Kingdom Builders Publications. Yeah. And um, the t- title of the book is Poetic Rhythms of My Heart. And I also uh, co-authored a book with her, the anthology that we also uh, uh, released last year, uh, Fresh Breath, and I really enjoyed being a part of that as well. Yeah, awesome. Good In for fact, you. In fact, she was Good a winner. You. She's an oh. award-winning, um, yeah. you know, poet. That's right, she award-winning. Was among some adjudicators, five adjudicators, as a matter of fact, and she mm. won the poetry division. Oh wow! Good for you, Sabrina. She didn't say all that stuff. She's so humble. Yeah, I know. I know, I know. <laughs> Thank you. My goodness, my goodness. All right, Louise, you're next up. We want to know who is Louise Smith, the publisher. A crazy person. No, but for real, I um, <laughs> I am my mother's child, the fourth child, and I am a person that is filled with passion and um. Go get it and go, you know, push. I'm a pusher. Um, I'm a musician. Um, I'm a songwriter, a singer, uh, a wife, a Grammy, grandmother. And um, I own a publishing company and a nonprofit um, organization. And um, I just love living. I used to be, like, really, really sick coming up as a child. And the doctors almost gave my mother and father a promise that I would not, you know, live past 20. But wow. God has blessed me. I'm in, I'm in my 60s. And I just wake up every day just motivated to run through fun, run through rain, run through adversities. Um, see somebody along the way, hand them some confetti, throw it on them, give them sunshine, <laughs> and just go on. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just go hey. on about my day. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Mm, so that's that's, awesome. that's wheezy in a nutshell, yeah. yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot right there. You know, you got to take care of pop-pop and, 
and uh, and baby boy over there and and manage people because you know when you when you have a company you know you you're not just their boss but you you know you got to be a little bit of everything to people nowadays. I mean that's one of the things that a lot of the big executives and some of the most uh, I say the most successful uh, um, um, executives and CEOs are saying these days to run a successful company you have to you have to have that family a family type environment, which means um, you know they're gonna bring everything to you when it when, when time comes, right? Right. Yeah, right. like Paul says, be all things to all people, mm-hmm. um, because you don't know you don't know what people are like. You know when you meet them, you don't know what's really in their heart. You know, and you could be, you know, that conundrum that stop them from killing somebody or you know, um, stop them from, you know, just going awry um, mm-hmm. because somebody paused to give them a, a time of day, right. you know, listen to them and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's important to to be people-oriented. Right. right. Mm-hmm. And Lord Sabrina, whoo, that girl, she carries a great big old ball of sunshine in her pocket. Yeah. I, know. I can remember the first day that I met Sabrina that I, you know, that I recognized her because, you know, we attend the same church. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we met actually on the grounds of the heart. We was going to see the heart, um, you know, um, what was that thing, Sabrina? We were actually um, the winners for the... Um, the he, heroes of the Midlands, heart heroes of the That's Midlands. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, being uh, heart disease survivors, we're both in that uh, selection. Right, because I I was um, I um, I was healing from a stroke, and she was dealing with a heart, and they just kind of put all of that together, wow. and um, and I met her, and then she reminded me. Um, you know, that, you know, we attend the same church and, um, I mean, just mm-hmm. famously hit it off immediately. We had some mm-hmm. of the same strengths and likes. And right. I said, well, come by, you know. Um, she was interested in the piano. I said, come by, right. let's, you know, let's do that. And then um, then I learned that she, you know, she loved to write. And I was like, well, I'm a publisher. Wow. <laughs> and, um, wow. Submit your stuff, right? Yeah, when yeah. we discovered it, it was yeah. definitely amazing how well we connected, and we definitely had a mutual love for the arts. You know, like uh, between music and writing and poetry, just the whole nine. And it was so interesting. And Louise, you know, she talks about me being a ray of sunshine, but I don't think I know anyone as bubbly and lively as Miss Louise is. You yeah. know, um, and so uh, she always just brings it out of people. And when she was introducing herself, she talked about her love for confetti. And it's amazing that she rains that literally on people at different events. And uh, <laughs> she just always welcomes you and just makes you feel a part. So it is very good knowing her and networking with her and being a part of, of what she tries to do. I can't even keep up with her all the time, but I try my best. <laughs> I can't and I keep up with myself, Sabrina. <laughs> Amen. 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 That's what it's all about. You know, she yeah. she she is a ray of sunshine. Every time I get on this show, it just brings something different to her. I, I don't get on get on here that often. You know, Absolutely. I have to request her. You hear me, Sabrina? I have to request her. She, right. she, <laughs> she. But it's um, all right, though. I, it's all I right. really appreciate um, this this core right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is something that um, you know, fell on my heart uh, a couple of weeks ago when I looked at how beautiful you ladies are sitting on that website, you know, positivepower21.org and how and what you guys bring, you know, to this network because like you like you just mentioned earlier, you guys connected because you guys were both going through something together where you God was healing your body, but he wanted to bring you together in fellowship. And that's what's happening. You guys are sharing, you know, you're sharing some of the triumphs, you know, that, that you, you know, some of the things you overcome. And, and there's people out there right now having a hard time going through things right now. And um, yeah. I'm thinking that this is so electrifying that all of you guys have 
come together so quickly on this network and everybody's getting along so well. You know, you're always going to have a little bit of squabble here and there because a lot of people have known each other a lot longer than they've known me. But um, I think overall it has been like great relationships have been built through this through this network. And I think God is so awesome for that. And I praise him, his name, his mighty name. So um, bless both of you. Thank you. It's, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah. yeah, awesome. So I want to ask Sabrina, mm-hmm. Sabrina, podcasting. Now, I know I remember we kind of forced it on you. <laughs> I thought you made a great guest. And I said, um, she's going to touch somebody because she's so genuine and so real. And, you know, by you being a poet, I think I think you may be the only poet on okay. the lineup. Okay. And okay. I really didn't want you to escape. And I want to, I wanted you to be able to share your work, you know, your inspiration with people. You know, you've been yes. through some, some things. And Jerry, it's so hmm. crazy. So many times I finish your podcast and I'm like, oh, Sabrina, you could have shared such and such. That was a point so relative to that topic that you just did. And I'm like, oh, well, I have already completed it now, you know. <laughs> but I definitely appreciate the opportunity to share my works because um, I try to make those that apply to real-life situations that we've gone through, and mm-hmm. I try to allow them to be encouraging, uplifting things, but things that people can definitely identify with. So oh, I yeah. appreciate the opportunity to do that. Yeah. But I not really only that, it. Sabrina, it's like yeah. – um, the 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 times that I've been you know afforded the opportunity to listen, mm-hmm. to your your academia comes out because you know oh, um, you. you are a teacher, and so you mm-hmm. give us those lessons. Not only do you encourage us, but you also mm-hmm. um, admonish, and you know it it comes across you know very you know as teachable moments, and oh, yeah. but they're always warm. I mean, you know, it's not yeah. like, you know, like the, you know, like the fire brimstone preacher. You know, he's mm-hmm. giving you the lesson that you should take, but he's sending you to hell while he's telling you, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not that style. It's warm, you know, it's inviting, and, oh, yes, I should be doing that, yeah. you know. And so that's what I get, you know, that's what I, you know, take away from, it, you know, the, oh, the, yeah. the times that I've heard you. And I would imagine that they were probably about 80% of your audience that feel that very same way. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Because I'm going to tell you how I feel. You know what it does to me, Sabrina? It makes me stop what I'm doing, stop what I'm thinking, and just start focusing on exactly what you're saying. And then what it does, it takes me back. It kind of, it kind of makes you appreciate your life a lot more. You know, like it's almost like you know how they, they say you stop and smell the roses, just do that right, sometime or right. stop and smell the rain. That's what right. it does to me. Yeah. 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 It, and, I, and, and, that, and that I thank God, you know, that you all feel that way. And I know it's just a testament of some of the things that I've gone through. Like, even though I'm still in my 30s, it's amazing. You know, like I've already had open heart surgery. I've already had to retire early, and most people in their 30s, you know, they normally wouldn't be living this life, but it's just the, uh, you know, my chance at what came up against me, you know, like dealing with congestive heart failure and then having to um, retire from my job full time, you know, uh, because of it and having open heart surgery and just, um, but willing, but being able to will beyond that, um, you have to encourage yourself and, Ms. Louise can certainly identify with some of the medical challenges that she's been through. Oh, but each God, time yeah. he bounces back so much stronger, so much more vibrant, and so much more determined. And I try to learn from examples like her and others who are going through because, um, as you all stated, so many people are going through things and have gone through things, and we just have to re- be reminded that we're not alone. And, mm-hmm. and I just try my best to not feel like a victim and just try to um, view my life as being victorious still because I'm still here and it's still a blessing to be here and I just want to encourage and uplift others as much as I can because, um, you know, my story won't be the same as others, but whatever it is that they're going through, I want them to be able to will themselves beyond where they are and, and look forward 
to brighter days ahead because, indeed, they are all coming for us. And mm-hmm. that's just what I try to invoke in people. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. And the greatest mm-hmm. history book or the greatest mm-hmm. story book or the greatest inspirational book lets us know that when we're born in this world, trouble is going to mm-hmm. come. Yeah. You know, um, mm-hmm. situations are going to come. You know, but we must overcome. And mm-hmm. perseverance is that thing. It's the power that leads our lives. You know, mm-hmm. um, as I was growing up, you know, um, you, my my mother, when I was born, you know, I, I had great challenges. You know, I was born a preemie child, and the orphanage called me Ethel Lazarus. You know, Ethel means warrior, and Lazarus means to come forth. Now, of course, I didn't know that um, at the time. But just um, I would imagine that I had a little will within myself, you know, to to just make it through, you know. And um, But then when I was around seven or so, yeah, six, I got hit by a car. And when I was about seven, I started having three types of seizures. Oh, Grand Mall, Petty Mall, Jacksonian. And, you know, it. can you imagine being young in school and being thrown to the ground and kids looking at you like, oh, you're weird, oh, what's wrong with you? You know, and yeah, so all of the yeah. thinking, all the illnesses, you know, the devout, you know, parents that, you know, um, didn't quite understand everything that they could have understood about me as, you know, being this type of person mm-hmm. and then, you know, growing up. But just every little round takes you lower, takes you higher, takes you flatline, takes you higher. Because, I mean, you just go through varying. I don't know about um, I don't know about you, Jerry, but I can imagine, Sabrina, you know, we have our moments where – depression just comes over you so hard and you have to press mm-hmm. through your depression. You have to press yeah. through your oppression. You you mm-hmm. just have to press through, you know, um, you know, all of the things that come up, people picking or, you know, you just looking at yourself going, I am the weirdest thing alive, yeah. you know, but I'm just so grateful yeah. that he gave you poetry, you know, mm-hmm. in your classes and he gave me singing. Because right. I, I definitely know that if I did not have singing, I would have been dead. Because mm. singing was the voice that I had in order to get me up, get me out, get me into, you know. It's, yeah. it's like it becomes our therapy. And um, it's our therapy and it's our motivation for others. Um, when other people are able to see what we do, you know, they're blessed by it, and it helps heal us so many times. I remember, um, and I don't dwell on it now because it has been a while ago, but I remember when my boyfriend Matthew died um, about over six years ago now, the only thing that helped me get through it was the next day I wrote a poem. And that poem didn't heal me, but it did help me get through the fact that he had passed. And I remember yeah. inside of it, God must have needed a baritone. So it is through poetry that I've been able to release some of the things that I've been through. I even uh, wrote a poem about my heart surgery experience called A New Pump on Life. And that poem just kind of told everything about my medical experience and what it meant to have CHF, what my symptoms were like, what it meant being not able to walk and all of these different things without getting winded and overheated. So it is amazing that God will allow us to use our gifts to be an outlet of healing for us, for what we bear, and to bless other people. So um, we are definitely blessed by your music and your ministry through your music, Miss Louise, and I just hope to encourage other people through my writings and, and teachings or whatever I can offer them Indeed. As well. Indeed, because mm-hmm. yeah. you are a very powerful vessel. Because I mean, look at look at. Um, I mean, the, um, I, I always like to equate things to to Christ. 
because right. that's our brother, right? So, mm-hmm. I mean, with all the crap that he had to go through, I mean, and he went through it. I mean, he came, he did nothing, he didn't bother nobody. You know, he was just mm-hmm. living his life. His mama put him out, put him out on blast. You know, um, she knew not to, you know, talk to him a certain way because he was the son of God. But then, you know, um, you know, she put him on blast when they went to the when they went to the wedding. He was like, "Okay, Jesus, it's time." He was like, "Can you just let me alone?" And so she didn't pay him no mind. She went up to them people. She said, "Okay, y'all out of wine. Okay, you see this man over here, Jesus. You go ahead and you talk to him, and whatever he tells you to do, that's what you do." And, Amen. you know, she put him on blast. He performed the first miracle. Next thing you know, they done stretched him wide and put him on a cross. You know, he died for the whole world. That brother did nothing, but he took on every kind of criticism to the point of his death. But he still remained faithful to why he came to earth. Mm-hmm. And he came to earth to live and to let us live abundantly. That's so right. that's really what our mission is. We come, we know we're going to die, mm-hmm. but what we, what we do in our lives will live on and on and on right. and on. Right. But for me now, you know, I ain't going to die till I'm satisfied. And I'm going <laughs> to die when I just can't help it. <laughs> oh, we come kid everybody at the same time, right? <laughs> come get us all. All right. Oh. I appreciate that. Woo, that was powerful. Probably and now, now I didn't have um, uh, I didn't grow up with any childhood diseases, and and either did my my, my siblings. You know, we pre- we grew up pretty healthy children, and my parents. I think my dad just had a a little battle with bronchitis for a while, and that just meant we couldn't have air conditioning in our house. <laughs> so that was <laughs> pretty trying in the summer months. But when I got a little older, um, going through a lot of stress you know, going through a development program on the job where, you know, they're looking at you as the future leaders of the company and, you know, always have to prove yourself every three to four months when you're starting over. I think dad and a bad diet and not exercising and running and ripping with the kids kind of took me out. So I did find out later on that um, I had, uh, but they call it borderline diabetes when you're sitting right there because it's not under control. So, um, you know, so now it's under control. I got my weight down. I'm feeling good, looking good, talking good. I feel good. That's good. <laughs> and, Nothing and better I'm, than that now, is it? That's right. right. Nothing better than that. Nothing. Nothing. And, 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 I, and I was doing the podcast at the same time, and I was doing like eight shows a week. So you talk about eight hours counting, you know, my, my 40 hours at my job. So it was it was wow. a lot going on at the time. So um, I thank God for the fact that I wanted to keep doing this. And I think if I wasn't doing this and meeting people, you know, people like you guys, I probably would have just been maybe feeling sorry for myself and just, you know, it probably would have just got worse. I probably would have been still on that medication, but I was determined that I want to be presentable, you know, when I go out there to meet people and represent this company because that's how I was trained, you know. By my family, and we, you know, we own the publishing company just like you, um, Louise. And you know, people want to see business people looking healthy. They don't want to do business with somebody look like they're about to KO and they're about to give you their money. You know, so um, it was very important for me to get my health back up to speed. And I meant eating right, exercise right, and, and putting the right liquids and and mainly mainly water. You know, so um, that was important. And I think that's why I decided to change the format of the program too, because now it's more like we're in the helping people business now. You know, when you say that, Sabrina, would you agree? Absolutely. The yeah. helping people business. We're helping people, you know. Absolutely. So, so Louise, I, I want to yeah. ask you. Now, you, you're a co-owner of a, of a, a radio station that's streaming live on iTunes and Live 365, and it's managed – you know, and um, produced by your husband, Superman Linton Smith. Yes. So what's that experience like? What's that experience like, you know, um, having your own broadcast, you know? That is an amazing, an amazing thing. I, I believe in all of my heart that uh, my husband erected 
the company, you know, erected a radio station because I had a need, you know, you know, you all know I have a a publishing company, a Christian publishing company, Kingdom Builders Publications, and I wanted the authors to be on the radio in our town, you know, so people could on the drive-by, you know, um, listen to, oh, I want to get that book, that sounds interesting, you know, mm-hmm. um, and um, so, but everywhere we went, man, the price was just so banana ridiculous. So yeah. one day in July, my husband says, darling, I think I'm going to start a radio station. Because, I mean, all of us, all of the authors that were spotlighted, we went to the studio and we did snippets. Remember that, Sabrina? We yes, did snippets I did. and I was going to, um, you know, shop this, you know, idea to the you know, man, I just had it so big and blow up in my mind. And they was like, sure, we'd love to do it, you know, but we need blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, this is not doable. Because, I mean, we're, we're authors, so we don't have a lot of money, okay? Mm-hmm. You know, um, we, we, we want to tell you truths, and you, we know that you will pay a fraction of what it is that we will give you. But we can't give you, as my dad used to say, you can't get get the seed and then um and then um eat the seed you know you need seed <laughs> in order to keep producing seed so right. when he erected that company it was just banana great and not really knowing everything about it i mean he spent day and night and when i say day and night i'm literally talking you know 18 19 20 hours a day you know, just trying to learn the concepts, learn the business, you know. Um, Then what was really so amazing was I saw my husband just transformed, and that's when he was with, um, when he met you, Jerry. (laughs) Because, you know, my husband is really, yeah, I'm I'm serious, because um, when we had come down to, you know, the the Mother's Day weekend, Mm -hmm. And he said, man, I'm going to come over there and, you know, I'm going to get this started, you know, with you. My husband became instantly, um, you know, he just, he just, he caught a brotherhood with you. And that's not often, you know, his style. But, I mean, it's like day and night and he was just like, I don't know, it's like brand new teeth that are in your head but you know you won't get cavities, and so you just eat yourself into a conniption. That is how he was. And he's like, pay and pay and die, and I didn't know half of what he was saying. <laughs> so it was so exciting. And so whenever he got to be with you by phone, um, you know, after the initial meeting, it's just been phenomenal. Yeah, and I think he always wants to, um, you know, to, to keep it with you because you say, man, we going, you know, we moving, we going somewhere, and he just want he wanted so desperately to be a part of that. So he he grows, and then, you know, when I thought I was ready, then I says, well, I'll do my own show, mm-hmm. you know, I'll do my own show, and so um, we've had um, pretty good success with the um, the Writer Society Radio Show, a spotlight um, author, yeah, painter, that. builder. Yeah. And then I spotlight other authors because, I mean, it ain't just about us. We ain't the only people writing in the world, you know what I'm saying. Right. So just give everybody a voice. And um, mm-hmm. it has just been phenomenal. Yes, yes. Love it, love it. And, you know, and, and I, and I told, told, told you guys this story all the time. You know, when when you're excited about something, I, I know I know what he's feeling, you know. And you know, when we talk when we call ourselves, you know, the superheroes, you know, Batman, Superman, it's because you feel like <laughs> you got superpowers on this thing. It's because yeah. you're touching lives, and 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 not only that, you know how how men how boys feel when they have a new toy or a new car. You just can't yeah. wait to drive it, and there's so many yeah. working pieces to this thing. And every time I find out something new or a new idea, you know, I drop it on. Lit. If he got a new idea, he drop it on me. And we meet new people, we we drop them on each other, and that's ah, oh, I'm not ready for that yet, dude. He'll go ahead and try it out, and I may drop an idea. He said, oh, I'm not ready on that, but I'm gonna look at it anyway. So 
Yeah. It's just good to have a brother that you can share that with because oh, my man. family, they don't yeah, understand man. what I'm talking about. You know, my, my, yeah, my sons, they, they, like, they like pieces of this thing that when we go out in public, but they don't, understand, they don't really like care about the studio yeah, part. Yeah, the they intricate like working. Right. Yeah. That's me. Right. So that's me doing this, you know. But, they, but my oldest son, he, 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 see, he used to do editing. And but but he had gotten a bad taste in his mouth from it because he was dealing with the with the um, the music industry and a lot of times they don't want to pay and they want to they That's want right. all this quality and then they flying oh. you these places souping you up. So when he came back and he started working in sports with ESPN, I think that's when he saw what people are like with money because because he's right there interviewing these million dollar guys and then I think he just said I think that's what drew him closer to the ministry when he got a chance to see that so when he went to work for Reginald Lewis Museum and learned how to do setup he that was funny and I'm going to tell you all the story real quick I know it's about y'all but just real quick it was real it was real crazy how this happened now you guys know how I love me some Baltimore Ravens I love me some NFL yeah. football <laughs> love it my yeah. son who can he tell had, Jerry all right but Brandon had an interview with the Baltimore Ravens, and he said, Dad, and this is before they won the Super Bowl, he said, Dad, I have an interview with the Ravens, and I want to take you with me. I know I'm not going to take the job, but I'm, we're going to go anyway, okay? Wow. And I think that's what he told me. I think he told me he already made it his mind he wasn't going to take the job. But I think because they was interviewing, he supposedly had an interview in TV. That's what it was. Okay. So he went down there to interview with them because they have their own TV called Rave TV. And then when he – you know, when was, I was hanging out in the lobby, looking at everything, you know, the trophy and everything. So when he came down and we went, you know, we went back, because I didn't live too far from it, from the place. And he said, um, they offered me radio. I said, wow. I said, you're going to, because he has a voice for it. I said, you're going to take it? And he said, no, I want to do TV. That's, that's where my, my heart is. I said, really? Oh, man, they really want you to work there. That's all I'm thinking about, right? So, <laughs> so he, so he so he didn't take the internship, so he took it with, and this is, I think, right after he was working for ESPN because he was doing field work. He was doing the college games, the pro games, and basketball, I think, it was between football and basketball season. So he ended up um, taking a job with the Reginald Lewis Museum. I'm not sure if everybody knows who Reginald Lewis is, but he was one of the first black billionaires. He was in the food, frozen food industry, and um, he had made all his money, but he passed at an early age, very young. And um, but they had a museum named after him here in Baltimore where they, you know, they spent millions of dollars on this thing, state of the art. So he had an opportunity to work there, and this is just when HD high definition TVs and audio was coming into play. And he had an opportunity to learn how to do installs and do set up for events. So they always have him. I call them tea party. You know, the you know the the house of Diddy people. You know, the bougies. So he's always. They always I love tea parties. Those are some real. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah, well, I call them tea party. But they like art events. It could be anything that, you know, people book the place for. So he was learning how to do that. And, and just happened that that helped him land a job with one of the largest Fortune 100 companies in the world. And they just love him. So, and it, it was really tough for him to get that job because they was asking for nine years of experience. And you're talking about a guy that just got out of college. Yeah, yeah, they wanted nine years of experience to work in his department. And he just oh, got out of college, but fortunately – he was in college for seven years, <laughs> and during oh, this time, he was doing internships. He was working with the school, doing their, their uh, you know, the school campus TV, and oh. doing setups. And he was working for his church, and he was working for um, the Reginald Lewis Museum ESP. So they were so impressed that he, it was just him and one other guy to interview for the job. And this guy was actually a film guy. He actually knew film in the motion picture industry out of California. But wow. luckily for Brandon, the blessing was that the company wanted to go young because they, they had a lot of people that were around the same age, and they all was probably going to be retired. This happened to a lot of companies. You know, a lot of people leaving at the same time, and they wanted to go young and teach, you know, someone their, their way, you know, their company way. So he got the job over this guy, and that was just such a blessing, you know, that wow. he was able to – he had that experience. And, um, wow. and, and I think he's been there five years now. So that's been a real oh, blessing. That's an amazing story. Yeah. He, yeah, he's helping help me with this because he and what's you talking about a guy that um 
didn't really know much at all about electronics and this and that. Now he knows everything about video editing and audio editing and the software and the smartphones. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, he was able to help me because when I run into some problem, I can just ask him. And, of course, now, you know, YouTube is there, but it doesn't have all the answers for you, you know. But uh, well, that was yeah. a real blessing. So that was basically that's, that's his testimony. That's our family testimony. And um, that's, that's what podcasting, and that's why I'm here right now with, with this, this outstanding platform, with you outstanding people. And I appreciate well, y'all coming on here, sharing well, the, your story. Well, the um, editing, you know, um, being that I'm in music, um, I I never really did my own edits, you know, in, in mm-hmm. a song, you know, like voice over and that kind of thing. I've right. always um I've always loved it. I did radio for six months, um, broadband, um, for right. a company called The Light. And oh, um, wow. for many I used to um do commercials and but then my son became gravely ill and oh. I you know, I got out of it because I sold radio you know, I did the whole gamut of it, you know, like that. So I was, but after I had the stroke, man, I was very, very nervous because I, sometimes my brain freezes and I can't get my words out. Or I see it, but I'll say the wrong thing. And I just, I wanted to do it, but I was very nervous and very afraid. So oh. then I decided, well, I will, you know, use a recording program um, you know, and I will record it and I will just, you know, take out all of the bad portions and put it together and put some music to it, la, 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 do, you know, a few tips and voila, you know, I have a show and that's worked for me. But now that my husband has discovered the live piece, <laughs> he's trying to encourage me to go live. I'm still not quite ready. I know that I'm I'm speaking on and on right now um, mm. without, you know, too much of an issue, but it just frightens me to know that I will be trying to interview somebody, me interviewing somebody, that frightens me. So I just got to get a little bit more oof onto my belt before I go into doing that. No, you're doing well. You're doing well. Because, I mean, even though... I do pre-recorded shows because I know, you know, Linton was really big about that going live. And, and, I mean, because his his format with Live 365 is live anyway. As soon as he dropped his playlist, you know, it's out there all day long. And that was one of the reasons why I decided to go into – to be a radio station because of him. Because before I was just podcast, it was just me. And I had, you know, a few guests, and, I, and, I, and that's when him and I struck a deal to exchange. You know, he had some, get some of my talk shows, and I take his music because I was streaming our gospel on the weekends. And then uh, when Linton and I struck a deal to run our Jasper program, that's when things started really turning for me to look into getting into 24-hour ready because it looked like it could happen. Because at first I didn't think it would happen. I was like, wow, I don't have enough material to go 24 hours for seven days a week. But uh, he helped, you know, him and um, – Pastor Keith Ralph Powell helped that to happen, you know, gave mm-hmm. me the material to make it happen. And you know we stream you too, so yeah, it's yeah, a know, symbiosis of, of, of um, quality. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, I know he snatched, he grabs a couple of our shows, um, the one-hour program. That's why I try to get the ladies to, to keep the show so they have an opportunity to go on Live 365, which is a blessing because, um, after, you know, me and Linton was going back all week long and said, Linton, I cannot find you on iTunes. But it turned out that he's not actually podcasting. He's actually running a live radio, internet radio on iTunes, which is a yeah. separate a separate entity with them, which I never knew there was a difference. But iTunes, Apple had decided to say, okay, podcasting is this, internet radio is that. So they, they found a way to separate us. You know? Okay. So, but I have a, I think I may have an opportunity to stream because I do have a live stream too, but it's so-called that our shows are all pre-recorded because um, we stream overseas and those people in different time, they, I mean, they like, man, they're way, that time zone. So it benefited me to do a pre-recorded show because I, there's no way I could be sitting out here all day long. Oh, my God. To, yeah, because that's like to meet six, East seven East. hours yeah. away. Yeah, right. It'd be, it'd be mm-hmm. tough. And then just dealing with the West Coast alone because the West Coast is a big part of our audience, real big part. 
So mm-hmm. um, to me, for me, I understand what you mean because if something you said you don't like, go grab it. You don't have to feel bad about it. <laughs> it's like, wow, well, who heard that? You just go get it and then and then send it out when you're ready, you know, which is an yeah. awesome thing. Yeah. So good for y'all. Good for you guys. Now, we're not going to be in here all night because we try, we try <laughs> and keep it to an hour. So, Sabrina, mm-hmm. what what do we have to look forward to from Inspiration with Sabrina? Well, I hope to um, continue to develop more topics that are um, everyday living experiences with people that they can identify with. And I also hope to bring in some of my friends for them to share experiences uh, that they may be going through or things that they uh, can enrich the lives of others based on what their background is in. So I hope to start incorporating that more into my shows also. Um, yeah. So those are some of the things that I look forward to doing and definitely sharing more poetry and just more insight on different life matters. Yeah, we need it. We we need some we need some Sabrina Brown inspiration. <laughs> okay. Thank yeah. you so much. And, and you know what's so funny about her, Louise? I said, I can't, you know, I used to get that call from her. You know, we used to like have this 830 thing and I said, okay, we're going to have it up by now. But now since... You know, it's so many of us on this on this network right now. It's like when Sabrina right. sends it and she lets me know it's there, then you know it'll be a treat for everyone when it gets up. So I don't put no pressure on her, and I, you know, only God knows when she's gonna be ready to give us a little bit more of Sabrina, and uh, and then we'll make that thing happen on iTunes for her, where people can be able to catch her show out on iTunes, and at the same time it'll be streaming through this network, and um, make people yeah. more happier. More happy. Yeah, I just have All to. All right, uh, that's your setup now. now. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So what you gonna say, Sabrina? I just, I just have to figure it all out. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make it happen because I found a video that you can't you can't miss with this one. You okay. can't. This guy. This guy. I think the video is like a minute eighteen seconds. He take you straight to where you need to be. Bam, bam, bam. Next thing you know. You're going to be on iTunes. We just got to wait a couple of days for them to process it. And, um, you know, that's what I'm hoping because I think with them, you have to have you have to show them that you, you're going to be producing some episodes. So we may have to give you a chance to get up some more episodes, and then we okay. probably can initiate an application to them because I think that's that's one of the I didn't they didn't I never really read all the terms and stuff like what are they looking right, for? But right. if you look at some of the power hitters that's on iTunes, you see some uh-huh. names that you're gonna recognize. You're like, Whoa, I know that person. I'm standing I'm sitting there right next to him. I'm whoa. like, Whoa. Okay. I said, Wow. Yeah. But it was a friend of mine told me that he was out on iTunes and he doesn't do a lot of shows. He's seasonal. He does um he does that show called uh, um Something of the Thrones. And, and you know they only have sixteen shows, so he's only doing like sixteen episodes a year. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe he caught him at the right time, but we'll see. I don't want you to submit it and he, you get shot down, and then right. we can't get you back out there again. So maybe we should, you know, maybe we can we watch how you produce more shows, and and then we can get you out there. But right now, I can manage you right now because right now I just have you and T that I'm actually um producing. Everyone else, you know, is out there on their own right now on Blog Talk Radio. And I remember you and I talked about that, too, which would have been a real easy, but I said, she loves Spreaker Radio so much. I could not get off that platform. Oh, my God, Jerry. If I would have never started on Spreaker, it would have been easier to transition to other things. But I definitely plan to, uh, you know, make that a part of what I do as well. But yeah. I definitely love Spreaker. I can't lie about that. <laughs> I know yeah. you do. And look, Louise, I told her, I said, well, they got for... a, I told her, I said, look, they got a free uh, account with Blog Talk Radio, which, you know, you get 30 minutes a day, which is what basically she does her show for 20 minutes anyway, which has been perfect. Yeah. The only thing was, you know, but she don't mix her own music anyway. I do the music. So it wouldn't have made a difference. I said, all right, try Blog Talk Radio. She still was holding back. And I'm going to see the video on that, Sabrina. You're going to like, wow, this is that okay. easy? It's that okay. easy. Yeah. Okay. Same okay. thing. Just call in, dial that phone number, and do a show. That's all you got to do. <laughs> okay. All right? 
All right, right ladies. We're going we're gonna to take a quick little break, and we're going to listen to Louise's song since we have one. I wish I had a, a recording of Sabrina's poetry. Um, I didn't get a chance to make a copy because you did, you did do a reading on our show. But if you don't mind, after, after um, Louise's song, can, can you do a reading, a live reading? I can. I have my book All right, with good. You. All right. All right, good. Okay, we're, we're ended on that note then. Okay, so let's go ahead and play um, Lent and Louise's song called Since I Met You, um, Jesus. And then we're going to we're I got to send you some more music, Jerry. Jerry. Yeah, you do. We've been playing this thing for a while now. Yeah. So, see, Touch Me opens my show. I like. I love that song. It's a nice calmness to it. Get everybody you know, you. Like, toned down, you know. All right, here we go. Poetry book written by Philip Fury, testimony of one's true greatness. Without the touching and compelling healing story, 
one wouldn't be able to tell the grace and the goodness of God's ultimate and testimonial glory. These stories and the uplifting messages behind the concept and the meaning of this book is mostly about overcoming tough challenges, obstacles, and giving God all the well-deserved glory and the highest praise. This book is available on Amazon.com in digital and hard copy, and you can find it in Infinity Publishing at fivebooksontheweb.com. Testimonial of One's True Greatness by Poet Philip Beard. Hey everyone, don't forget about Tea Time Thursdays with Jerry Boyce Live Worldwide on PositivePower21.org. You are listening to Jerry Boyce Live Worldwide Podcast. All right, you tell them, robot, they listen to Jerry Boyce Live Worldwide on PositivePower21.org. Don't forget, y'all, we're on iTunes. Check us out on the podcast, or you can just Google Jarvis Live and Spreaker Radio and iTunes will come up. Listen to all the episodes, over 2,000 hours. So if you don't have anything to do but watch Netflix, tune in. Tune in to PositivePower21.org. Get empowered. Cry a little bit. Get inspired. Be happy. That's right. The Lord is coming soon. He's coming to get us. So you better on your best behavior. Now, we're talking to Sabrina Brown, Inspirations of Sabrina on Positive Power 21, and also we're talking to Louise Linton. She is the wife and the CEO of Linton Smith, <laughs> Jr., <laughs> and also she's co-owner of his company. That's right. And we appreciate meeting all of you, and um, it's just been a, a quite a ride. Uh, it's just been so inspirational. Inspirational being part of your lives. And right now, we're going to get a treat. Sabrina Brand going to lay, lay it down for us with her, her, her writing, her talent, her God-given gift to us. Thank you, Sabrina. We ready for you. All right. Thank you so much, Jerry. This Amen. piece is entitled, uh, Never Stray. Never stray too far from the door. There are always new things to explore. Some things must leave for others to be bestowed. So never leave too far from the door. Never stray too far from the window. There you may hear the sweet hummingbirds crescendo. There the light of the new dawn of a new day falls upon you. So never stray too far from the window. Never stray too far from your dream. If you harvested the thought, then see what it can be. The manifestation of a new hope and life's spleen are all nestled away in a dream. Never stray too far from God's hand. The protection and support he gives is worth every command. Follow where it guides you and take heed to its plan. Never stray too far from God's hand. Never stray. Mm, That's so beautiful. And we want to remind everybody that um, that song we just played was by Linton and Louise Smith. It was called Since I Met You, Jesus. And we appreciate both of you and sharing your gifts with PositivePower21.org. So, bring we just want you to keep on reading to our people. Thank keep you reading so to much, us. Sharon. You're I welcome. It. Yeah, we and love y'all. Keep making that great music. <laughs> That's right. That's we love you both. We love you both, and we appreciate you here. And I know the people Thank of God you. appreciate you too, touching their heart with your special gifts. And and that's what I think it's all about: sharing, sharing our love. You know, praising Him. Mm-hmm. Who's so talented, so much talent. You can't just keep the talent for your for yourself. You can't just use it for your own therapy. Just somebody else can use that therapy. Right, Louise? Yeah, right, true. right. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We That's were designed right. to give it away because it was given to us. Yeah. Amen. You gotta share it. You know, God takes stuff Amen. away from you like that if you're not sharing it. Right? That's what I heard. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You yeah, use it or lose it. Can't just wait till you get hurt. When I'm feeling well, you gotta share it all the time. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I know I can get some time. You know, I hear the stories about being on the choir. <laughs> you know, going up against all that other. Why she singing? Why, why my daughter not singing? <laughs> what grandma not singing? I know what. It, I know. It's, you know, people are people. You know, so then you just say, I just go home and sing to my own family, sing to myself, read, write my own poetry. I know it gets like that sometimes. <laughs> Everybody's so competitive in this world. Is competition a sin? Yeah. 
It's being competitive. It's not easy to be because, I mean, there's singers a penny a dozen, you know, and everybody brings something different to the table. It's because God is, I mean, he's the creator. So he's going to drop himself in everybody alive, whether it's, mm. edu- ed- whether it's education, whether it's the art, you know, um, whatever sphere it is, he's dropping a little portion of himself to everyone so everyone can benefit from him. Mm. Amen. I can't Amen. sing like the next person, you know, because there's always the level that you are, there's always someone lower than you and higher than you, but you just got to know your place and put out what you do and right. put out what you do the best of your ability. You know, like mm. um, I would dare presume to go, oh, I mean, I'm jealous of Sabrina. Sabrina writes so good. I mean, she's below her line. You know, mm. I write. I don't write like Sabrina, but I write. And, it, you know, whatever nation Sabrina captures, that. Sabrina's nation, whatever, right. whatever nation I capture, whatever nation you capture, Jerry, as a radio um, host and owner, you know, that's you. But that, you know, and so everybody's just got to know their place and don't be jealous of God. That's right. That's right. He blesses differently. Because he's the, he's the one that's putting it in us. That's right. That's right. He puts it there. Plant it. All right, y'all, we're going to take it on out. So I'm going to give you both an opportunity to uh, share your final thoughts with my audience. I know they enjoyed you because I enjoyed you both so much. I'm glad you were able to do this. And I know I forgot to confirm the appointment, but we, <laughs> that it was a blessing. I caught you guys off guard. That's right. Couldn't, couldn't script it. I know you try to script a show with me. You can't do that. You got to be real. That's right. You ready, you ready Sabrina? Uh, yes. Um, I just... Thank you again for this opportunity, Mr. Jerry, and thank you for providing the platform in Positive Power. And I just so agree with your mission and your vision just to provide positive, inspirational, and spiritual programming for um, a wide audience of people because um, you never know who could be uplifted by what ministry or what special message on any given day. So it is a blessing to be a part of this family, and I just enjoyed the experience. I never thought I would have the chance to be a podcaster, and I was a little uh, hesitant at first, but I do enjoy it because I've always, um, I'm a talker by nature. I get it honestly from my father, and I just enjoy sharing with other people. So I thank you for these opportunities, and I just hope that God will continue to allow me to do it and uh, just to be used um, as a vessel for him uh, through Amen. various ways. So I Amen. thank you for right. giving me the opportunity to, to do inspirational vibes. You're welcome. You know, you're building your legacy. That's right, building your legacy. Because it's always going to be out there. That's right, sitting out there on iTunes forever, as long as iTunes are around. And you're blessed. you got to keep it moving. Because remember, Sabrina Brown, you're part of a Christian saving radio station. That's Thank right. you so much. I always Amen. remember that. You don't know who you just kept from jumping off that roof, you know. That's true, You just don't know. All right. So yeah. that day that you could have podcast and you said, ah, I'll wait till tomorrow. Jerry not going <laughs> not going to publish it anyway. So, but you never know. It might be on the sales. Like, oh, look at Sabrina. She sent me a she sent me All a right. podcast. That's All right. right. You just never know. <laughs> All right, I appreciate you. Thank you. We love you so much here at Positive Power. Thank you. Thank you. Love All you, right. too. Thank you. And the famous one, Louise. Yeah. You ready? <laughs> drop it, drop it. Jerry, I tell you what, I am so grateful to God that um, the North and the South blended themselves together. You know, Gamecocks. <laughs> and, and the Raiders, you know, just, just really happy about that. And, um, you know, you gave my husband, you know, um, the opportunity to cheat on his wife, you know, with men. Right. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like you kind of bad, you know. But um, mm-hmm. you know, I understand the mission, and I, I appreciate God for his creative juices flowing through him and the one thing that I would love to put out 
is that um, we're going to be celebrating the writers. We're going to be celebrating the illustrators and the poets. Uh, we have a new slate of people for 2015, and we even have some into 16, and we're going to be celebrating them um, November 14th at the mm. Holiday Inn Hotel and Suites. It's going to be a bum diggity. So you want to get your tickets if you're in this area, and I do think the Bellows, they will be coming from um, from um, Baltimore, Maryland. And I don't know, Jerry, you might want to stick your foot in the car and come on down too. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could. I'm in a, I'm in a middle. We, we, we be in playoffs for you football. You know how competitive I am with right, football. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we kind of shut down right here from, you know what, this may be my last year being shut down from August and November because my son told me he's going to enter the high school league. So he oh. actually skipped the, he actually skipped the grade. So he's actually a year ahead of everyone. Well, his friends yeah. are. So I'm, I'm hoping he was going to stay back one more year, but he said he's going to play um, some JV football. So that just means I don't have to be taking him to practice because he he will already be there. Okay. So, uh, I, I mean, I'll be able to do some stuff, you know, um, you know, skip a couple games. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. You know, I'm totally virtual. That's what I like about this business. <laughs> you can travel. You can travel by your voice. <laughs> and periscope yeah. now. You can periscope it. <laughs> so we can see it. Because I still haven't seen them pictures yet from your and from your anniversary for the radio station. You know? Oh, you're so right because I'm almost done doing it. I mean, I I have like four hundred things that I have to do a day and two hundred of them yeah. seems to be with my sweet papa. But yeah. um I'm I'm at the end and it'll it'll get up. Right in yeah. the time that I'm, I'm setting up for, you know, the gala. So I'll hit you up immediately when it's done. All right. You, you got to take advantage of YouTube. You know, YouTube, you can load all your pictures on there, and they were they were dropping the slideshow for you, and it's published. You know that? Oh. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, I like to do some of that because I like to do my little cuties and my little one, two, threes. But that's yeah. a great tip, Jerry. Thank you for letting me know. I might do yeah. the next time pictures like that. Yeah, you just select what you like, and um, they have, like, different creative little templates and everything. Just make it easy for yourself, man. People are always okay. doing stuff the hard way. The yeah, hard that's true. Way. That's too well, you know. I'll be working lo- in the heart, yeah. But what I, I'm going to tell you what I learned about the Smith Sabrina. <laughs> no matter what I tell them, they're going to still do it their way. <laughs> let, that, let ain't the, true. that ain't true for every Smith that you know is. <laughs> You know, maybe not the reason, but I know Superman would let Superman would listen to me. He said, "Okay," and he don't even write it down. And then, yeah, he, then I talk, so he found another way of doing it. <laughs> Lois Lane and Superman, yeah. What a couple! What a couple! We appreciate y'all though. Because I, I told Les, I looked at twenty videos, and they said, "Do it like this." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all right. I'm going to still put it on, though. Anyway. Lord knows that you've never seen any. I know. I said, because mm-hmm. hey, he's a Marine. That's what it is. I didn't, feel right. I, didn't, I, didn't serve the, I didn't serve the U.S. military, but I was I was on the streets trying to survive, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> I was a that's DJ. A, so. Yeah. yeah, I told him, I said, I was a DJ, man. We was in some hard territories in Baltimore, man. Y'all heard, y'all saw the wire. Y'all saw the wire. I ain't oh, lying. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it was my tough. God. That's wow. right. White Lock and yeah. North Avenue ain't, it wasn't easy to be a DJ around there. But they the only ones had the money to pay us, though, and, and, and come pick wow. us up. Yeah. yeah. All right, y'all, enough about me. It's time for us to get out of here. But I appreciate you ladies joining me on Ladies of Radio, Ladies of Internet Radio. My friend, Louise Smith. And Sabrina Brown. It's been so awesome to have you both. And continue success, whatever you do. Okay? Continue continue success. And anything we could do for you here, you know, we, we're right here for you, Sabrina. Only thing, you just can't ask me for no money, but I, I try to help you in other areas. You know we loaded, right? We wish we were. We, be working on that though, so I can fly in and fly out of South Carolina. 
right? All right. Looking right forward to that, Gary, with your cool That's glasses right. on. Yeah, you know what? Um, so Sector Seven told me I had to stop wearing my glasses. I guess they must be they must be auditioning me for a big movie or something. Yeah, the last producer said, Jack, what's up with the dark glasses? I said, man, I'm on the radio, man. I don't want people seeing my soul. That's all right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I know. It's, it's entertainment, right, Sabrina? That's all it is. It's entertainment. <laughs> right. Right. That's right. That's right. Just having fun with the people. All right, y'all. You know what I always say, Sabrina and Louise? I told people all the time. You want to hear the good stuff. I mean, the real good stuff. You got to listen to Sabrina Brown and Linton Smith's wife, Louise, from Kingdom <laughs> Building Publication. Publishing, right? Publishing. Yes. What's your website? Yeah. yeah. What's your website so people can check you guys out before I close out? www.kingdombuilderspublications.com. Amen. And you, Sabrina? And mine is uh, www dot a b l s and poetry books dot com. Whoa, man! I had to go to college to remember that. Why <laughs> oh, y'all making so complicated? Why y'all both okay. making so complicated? <laughs> that's a hard. That's a hard call letter to remember. The initials. It's the initials of my company, you know. But it is. It is pretty long. I do admit that. <laughs> I think you're going to say abc123.com. <laughs> it should be that easy, but not quite. Not quite. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> All right. I'm going to get y'all. All right, everybody. I'm Jerry Woods Live. I'm worldwide. We Thank you for you. tuning in to Jerry Woods Live. Like you too. Power 21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash Positive Power 21. This is a Woods Enterprises production. And don't forget about replay on Facebook.com forward slash Jerry Voice Live. That's a wrap.